isotope R6. And that's for denoise or de-reverb. De-reverb usually. And the reason why is that I, even engineers that should know better, producers that should know better, if they come on and Skype, they tend to do it in a noisy environment. I never could quite figure that out. But sometimes it'll be in a room that's really boingy. So there's a lot of reflections and I got to take them out. So the way I do that is isotope R6 de-reverb. It works pretty well. And from that, we actually get a pretty clean sounding recording. Now on the mix bus, I only use one processor and that's a FabFilter Pro L2 limiter. The reason why I use that is because of the readout that it gives. It'll give a LUFS readout, which is really important. I try to keep the sound of the podcast the same from episode to episode, as well as the volume. So what will happen is there'll be about 9 dB of gain that I'll add on the FabFilter Pro limiter and a custom meter setting that I'm looking at. And there's also a style setting, and that's on transparent. You really can't hear it working. But the big thing here is I'm looking at a LUFS level, an integrated LUFS level of minus 16. And it may be a tenth of a dB above or a tenth of a dB below, but it's usually right around minus 16. That's what I always go for. That's what helps to make the level so consistent from episode to episode, or at least I hope it is. And it's one of the reasons why I use the fab filter. Prior to that, I was actually using a TC Electronic LM1N, and that was to monitor the LUFS levels. And now that I have it built into the limiter, I don't have to do that. I was using a compressor and a limiter prior to that, and I think it was the same stuff I'd use on my music mix bus, which was always a uh, SSL compressor. PSP vintage warmer sometimes and a precision limiter UAD precision limiter 